Hey gang, we are back on the dusty trail. I am in Arizona, of course, and we're actually by a town called Superior, which is mm, about a mile, well, not even a maybe a mile or so that way. We got some history going on here, and basically right over there, down the hill, or this Route 60 we've got going on here, there was the ghost, well, there's a ghost town now, not much left of it, but there are some remnants of Pinnell. Some people call it Pinnell. We'll go by Pinnell, that's what most people call it. Really cool, late eight, you know, mid to late, 18, late 1800s, uh, it was booming silver. They were hauling silver out. You go down there, scout around, there's some really cool old, well, among other things, there's the original wagon wheel tracks of them, you know, hauling the heavy silver out. And they're like, it's like rock engravings. Okay, a quick transport. Beam me up, Scotty, on the Starship Enterprise. We are at the location of those, those wheel tracks I was talking about that they made in with the silver, hauling the silver out. It was quite a drive in here to find this. And a little bit of a hike here at the end, but no problem. But yeah, you can see it. Look at this. Wow. And it's turned to rock. Look at that, guys. Isn't that amazing? It's turned to rock. And you can see these ruts. I'll give you a kind of a scale with my hand. That'll kind of show you. That's a good 14 inches, 18 inches in some spots. Amazing. And just imagine how heavy, how heavy those wagons were with all the silver heading out this way. I'm sure where, if you look straight ahead, that's Highway 60. And that's the trucks and cars you hear. And I'm sure that was the happy trail back in the 1870s when this was rocking. Look at this, amazing. Let's follow it a little bit. Let's see what we see here. Yeah, it just keeps going. Look at that. Right here it's, gosh, uh, this wall is about two, two, two and a half feet high almost. I should say deep. But it looks like it just keeps going there. On and on and on into the bush. Look at this iron bar. I wonder what that was for. There's some more over here. This is the picket post. Look at that, the picket posts. Yeah, these are some real artifacts here, guys. Look at that. Here's another one. It looks like a giant bolt. Look at that. Hmm. Big old piece of metal. Big bolt. Walking along, and there is a foundation here. Look at this, guys. Foundation of a building. Yeah, goes all along here. Built in the side of the hill. I wonder if this is the this was the smelter. A lot of metal. I wonder what that was for. Found some metal fragments. Not much left of the old ghost town. Bigger piece here. Here's a bigger piece. 
A lot of stuff still here. You can still see the bolt holes. Some strap metal. Another interesting piece, like a strap with bolts. Hmm. Wonder, what the, wonder what that was for you guys. Come on, who knows what that is? Somebody must know. Okay, let's get back to the story. Let's get back to the cemetery. Now we here, right here, I am at the Pinole Burial Grounds, now called the Pinole Historic Cemetery. And we're gonna take a walk around. Somebody here from the, the Earp, the Earp story, the tombstone stories buried here, many of you know. Maddie Earp, Maddie Blaylock, Cecilia, so we're gonna tell the story. But before I tell the story, and we're, we're gonna walk to some graves, couple of qualifications. Well, I'm gonna talk about the history, a little bit of history of around here, and then we'll walk to what I believe is just her marker. Now, I'm not big into cenotaphs. I don't do cenotaphs, right? You know that, but she is buried here. Some know where she's buried. She, we're, we're probably gonna walk over her grave at some point. Not gonna know, but we'll end at her marker, okay? So let's take a look at some nice scenery. And we're gonna find as we walk along, I, I just walked along the fence, I'm in the back now, but I, I haven't really explored the cemetery at all, but you can see right here, and there's a few of them just circles of rocks where there are remains and here I see a a stone All right. you can't read what it says but looks like a oh, that's a stone that looked like almost a piece of metal so Let's take a walk here, see what we can find. Pinnell was originally named Picket Post. It was here, there was a settlement by the U.S. Army, the troops under General George Stoneman. Now Stoneman did not do a good job. He was a Civil War guy, right? General, and he was sent out here and he was relieved of his command due to the controversy, the way he handled the Native Americans, and most namely the infamous Camp Grant massacre, which in itself was an attack on Pinnell. I have to tell you, that was just a brutal, brutal story. There was a First Lieutenant, a 37-year-old named Royal Emerson Whitman. I mean, he, he did good. There were, I mean, it was a fort, nobody really there, and then five women, Native American women, Indian as they were called, came in and they had been looking for a boy missing, and Whitman was really, handled it really good. and fed them and clothed them and took care of them. And then next thing you know, there were, and this is mostly Apache, Yavapai, White Mountain Apache, eventually, you know, this, this we're talking about the descendants of the White Mountain Apache. And now more natives were coming in and they were helping the farmers and they were doing work. And 
then, you know, there was all the attitudes, and there was a vigilante group that came, mostly of Mexicans and some Civil War <laughs> retirees and a few other bad guys, and they massacred, I mean, men, women, and children. And they do call it a massacre. They don't call this one a battle. You know what I'll say when there's Native American history and their massacres, it's the white, and then when they kill and they massacre the Native Americans, they call it a battle. No. So anyway, getting back to the story, the history of around here, you had Pinellas attack there, and it was just a really bad scene here. Now, Pinnell was a, you know, as I said, a silver mining town, and it was booming, like in the 1870s. It was first developed by prospectors and ranchers when they discovered silver here. Boomtown, no time at all. They had a couple thousand residents, and it was basically, again, at the foot of this I think this is called Picket Post Mountain. This dramatic, let me pan, that dramatic mountain there. And like I said, Pinnell, yeah, down here across Route 60 is where the ghost town is, if you want to come out and look for it and see it. And it was booming. There was a mine called the Silver King Mine. And, of course, like all the ghost towns, when that played out, by 1890, everyone had pretty much left except for about 10 people. And they closed the post office the next year. And the, it, be, it was pretty much deserted at that point. Here's some more graves. Oh, look, over here, there's a... There's a stone, an interesting stone, right here, and you can read it. Spanish, so 1916, it looks like November. So we're going to be talking about Maddie. Cecilia Ann Blaylock. Oh, look at this. Let's let's follow. There's like a trail here. Let's follow this trail. Like I said, I haven't done this. Looks like some interesting things down here. So a little background. Her original name is Cecilia Ann Blaylock. She was born in Monroe Township, Johnson County, Iowa. Her father, Henry, Henry Blaylock, mother, Elizabeth. She, Cecilia was one of three children, the second daughter, and they lived on a small farm. Henry and his wife were very stern parents, and of course, they, the kids, you know, they were, they were very religious. So they had to memorize the Ten Commandments, and they had to, they had to do all the, <laughs> no fun, <laughs> very strict. Children should be seen, not heard. Which, you know, if you're a kid back then, it means, holy crap, let's get out of here. Let's, let's disappear. So Celia went by Celia, and she was, as she was known in, as a child, and she learned all the biblical stuff. She'd go to Sunday school. But when she got older, she got some other ideas. Now look at this. It's like big pipes. Died June 21st, 1916. Obviously, this was probably made after that. Maybe not. So she was sick of farm life, and she's like scheming and scheming how she can get away. 1868, she decided to make her move, and she kind of dragged her her younger sister along, who was heavily influenced by her, normally, right? That's pretty typical. And she would survive because she did no trade. She was a skilled seamstress, and I mean, they didn't, you didn't really make much money back then doing that. 
And as such, it was very difficult, even with those skills, could barely get by. So they headed to the growing towns along the Kansas-Iowa-Missouri border areas and the adventures. And finally, it was too much. So it was time to go home. Shame, shame, shame. Of course, the parents shamed the heck out of her disgrace. And she quietly rejoined the family. Here's another grave I see up here, around the corner. But Celie was not giving up. She would persevere. She didn't want to stay home, and it was around that time she started going by the name Maddie, changing her identity. And that's when she turned to prostitution. Ah, we do have a newer stone here, Annie Marie, 1881, so somebody made her a new stone. And you can see the outline of the grave here. Let's see, which way should we go? Let's go this way. I see, I see something up ahead. So this is when she ended up in Dodge City. This was around 1876. And as you know, Wyatt Earp, he had just left Wichita. And a lot of people <laughs> met there. Of course, Wyatt was appointed assistant marshal there under Marshal Deeger. It's around May 1876 and that is where Maddie would work as a soil dove prostitute. So when Wyatt resigned in September of 1879, they said, okay, we are out of here. Let's go to Las Vegas, New Mexico, which is a really cool place. And that's where they met up with I believe Doc Holliday and Big Nose Kate and, you know, Maddie was along in tow because she was, had a relationship with Wyatt, kind of getting into the common law wife thing. And it is from there that they ended up here, passing through here, and this was booming. So they had some really good memories here. This will come into play. This is probably why Maddie ended up here. And. Of course, they, they went to Tombstone, and all the bad stuff happened there, right? There's another one. I don't see any writing on this one. It looks to be a child. It's a very small outline of rocks. I mean, maybe not. But I don't see any any kind of inscription, sadly. Okay, where should we go? Well, we could go over there. I don't see anything. I see the... This is surrounded by a barbed wire fence. It is completely enclosed. It's not just sitting here in the desert. December 1st, 1879. They'd be there. The census in Tombstone says that Maddie Blaylock was Wyatt Earp's wife, but there's no official records on any legal marriage. So Maddie suffered from extreme headaches, and as many of you know, she was addicted to laudanum. Laudanum was a, <laughs> I have to tell you, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, just a brutal medicine. Now, just imagine a little brown bottle filled with alcohol and opium and maybe some coating and some other things. And that's your medicine. Boy, you would feel good. And then you would be addicted and you take more and more and you get drunk at the same time. And what do they tell you now? If you got to take painkillers, don't drink alcohol, right? Well, this is going to come into play on this story in a big way. But yeah, she was she had headaches, that was her excuse. 
she they say she was very depressed a lot and wouldn't you be depressed if you were going out with Wyatt Earp and Sarah Josephine Marcus came along Sadie who by the way I named my my lab after and wouldn't you be mad well it, it you know it was kind of a competition that she was losing but really I mean getting to the crux of the story and how she ended up here you know after Morg was assassinated and Verge was shot and the train and they went to Colton where the family the parents are and Maddie was in tow and would end up why it would end up in San Francisco and this this is with with of course that's where Sadie was from so the whole thing just you know Maddie was like all right I'm out of here and she had to be completely derailed so she had good memories here so she comes back here and by the time she came here this place was dead like I say there was no and she was going to try and do her prostitution thing here she's getting older I mean she was only like 30 she wasn't old but this place was played out remember what I said it was down to like eventually I mean that was later down to 10 people but when she came it was on the big decline so she this is where she ended her life and it is said that she committed suicide with the laudan laudanum laudanum tongue twister but since, you know, I have to say, since she was addicted, I have a feeling that she just overdosed. But we'll never know. I don't know that history says it was suicide, but that is what the marker here says, which is right near the front of the cemetery, right here. And a very nice marker it is. Now, I don't think she is buried here. I mean, in this exact spot, we probably walked very close to her grave as we walk through. I believe there are some people that know where she is. Now what the heck is this? What is in those little vials? All right, I just, that could be kind of a uh, poor taste joke, but maybe not, maybe it's something else. Maybe that's, but I'm just wondering if that's alcohol and something else, but anyway. I believe that this stone was provided by the magazine that is owned by Bob Bosbell, the author, who does great work. It says died by suicide here. So if, I mean he's pretty good at history so maybe it is documented she died of suicide. Well, she's here somewhere, and it was a sad end no matter what. Maybe she just wasted away and OD'd. Maybe it was suicide, but she died here alone. But, you know, I got to tell you what I think about as I stand here. I think about her. I think about what amazing things she saw. I mean, you have to think about it, right? You have to think about it. She, she was part of almost all of this, the whole saga of Tombstone, most of the saga of the, the Wyatt Earp story and all the rest, Doc Holliday. She had to be intimate with Doc Holliday, had to be big nose. I mean, she was there. She saw it all. So just, just amazing. So she, she lived a short life considering, maybe an average life back then, but what her eyes saw, she lived, she lived a full life, I guess, maybe shorter, but full. Rest in peace. Rest in peace wherever you are. Cecilia. Blaylock, a.k.a. Maddie Earp.
All right, we're gonna head out of here. She's there somewhere. What a great spot. And we are going to now hit the dusty trail. A lot more stories are going to be coming from Arizona once they get settled here next winter. And they're going to be much more unknown. I mean, this is more of a known story, guys. Look at this. Isn't this cool? It's kind of like a little turnstile kind of thing. Keeps all the rugrats out with their vehicles. Yeah, I guess people were stealing things, and that's why we don't know where she is. Well, let's take a last look here. And yes, I'm going to have a lot more stories coming from Arizona. We're going to go way in the mountains, and we're going to uncover some stories. Good stuff coming, guys. From Historical Penal Cemetery by Superior, Arizona. Everybody stay safe.